I received a uh, a suggestion actually from a supporter of mine um, that they like it that I keep my audios pretty long. <laughs> Some, someone even actually suggested that I keep it make it like two hours long because you're working. Um, some of you, you drive trucks and uh, you got a long time to drive. Some of you, eight hours, nine hour shifts. And so for my audio to extend, we're really helping you. And I understand that, you know, sometimes 20 minutes isn't enough. You got to continue to switch over to the next video. That's kind of nice. And uh, for some of you who are kind of curious about, you know, how I get my callers and who are these people that Morpheus talks to? Who's these people who chime in? How do they chime in? Okay. If you don't know, I already gave you my, uh, my business email where you can, again, be nice, be cordial, be decent, be respectful, ask simple questions that, that might apply to, you know, practically everybody else in the world. Okay, because everybody else in the world is going to probably respond to your question because it will help them. And on the other end of that, uh, there was several people I told you before who who built up my fan base way before I built my YouTube channel, which have inspired me to pour it over to the YouTube channel to share with you. Okay. And there's always outside conversations that I have with people that make these uh, make these audios very more very much more enriched by the questions and their conversations that I might have. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and get right into this. As I always do, I'm going to give you my red pill here. I'm going to go ahead and take mine. Now, this is going to be one of my favorite audios. It's going to be one of my favorite. And I don't mind sharing with you. And there's there's going to be something in this for you. You see the beginning title. Okay? And because you toggled on to this, you are interested. You want to know what this is all about. I congratulate you for making it this far. Because that means you have met Morpheus. That means you are getting somewhere in your existence. That means since you are listening to this audio right now, that means that you are succumbing the best you could ever be. Because you're willing to listen and learn. You're willing to open up your mind and reach your greatest potential. And that, my dear brother, my sister, my American family puts a smile on my face because that's all that I want from you. That's all I want for you is to be better. Now, I had another emailer who asked me this question. And of course, you know, it's going to teether to other subjects. So stay tuned and just be patient. It gets better just like a book. The beginning starts off rough, but... You're going to be glad you came to this party. He asked me a very interesting question. He asked me uh, <laughs> if supercars, because they are so uh, expensive, and because they're so expensive, does that mean they are absent from plan obsolescence, from being having inferior parts? from the maintenance scheduling, from uh, breakdowns, okay, compared to everyday drivers. And of course, when this uh, supporter asked me this question, it really set off several other interesting uh, subjects, you know, of mine. Made me really start thinking because nobody really asked me that question. I didn't think too much about that. But I would tell you this as a, um, a car enthusiast since I was a child, okay? And my knowledge of cars and how they have developed through the years, 
there's always a struggle from, or you could say between the car manufacturers and the government specifications and uh, road procedures, such as trying to make fuel efficient vehicles um, at the same time, trying to continue a fair performance bandwidth. Okay. At the same time, trying to please the consumer, or you could say the customer, the purchaser, the supporter of whatever the car manufacturer may be. Okay. But the truth is, with that measure, it's sort of difficult to tell because high powered automobiles, or you can call them supercars or high performance, whatever you want to name them to be. Okay. Um, they're not driven as everyday drivers. There's not a, there's some who do. There are some people who do test drive these cars like that. But uh, from all four seasons, about 365 days a week, to use that as an everyday driver as you would do a Ford Focus or a uh, Chevy of some type or some kind or a Honda or Toyota, or even a Kia. Some of you might be having those Kias or Nissans, Sentras. It's hard to tell, but I am pretty sure being a mechanic myself and knowing about automobiles, the bill will be much higher when it comes to maintenance. I don't think because it's a pricey car that they are absent from mechanical problems. OK, because there's one thing that they do that the everyday driver does not do, and that is they are built to run. They're built to to move at a high rate of speed. They're built for high performance. OK, so with <clears throat> with the compounded performance and the ability to um, be aerodynamic. OK. Cars that are built like that, built for speed, um, built with V12 engines, V10 engines, and some V8, high power V8 engines with 800 to 900. So the horses are usually for fun time. They're going to be brought out on a special Sunday uh, to impress the ladies. Sometimes they're just brought out for a challenge or maybe for a, a show. Usually owners of these cars bring them out for a show. Right. Um, especially the Lamborghinis are the, of course, the Lamborghini Huracans, the Bugattis, your uh, McLarens and maybe even a, a Pagani if you're lucky enough to see one of them. All right. And because they are so expensive and so pricey, even rich people or you can say people who are fortunate, they're not silly enough to drive the car as an everyday driver. Because even they know that uh, it will cost them their yacht. It will, co it, it will cost them um, their cabin in the woods or their cabin on the mountain somewhere. It would cost them dearly for the money that they would have to invest into this expensive automobile. Okay? Um, just because the car may cost uh, around a ballpark of $2 million or $3 million, some maybe 1500 well, excuse me, I don't get that wrong. One million, five hundred and something. OK, um, maybe some maybe around five hundred thousand for some of these Porsches that you might see if you're lucky enough to see them. OK, then you have some very decent uh, supercars that are in reach or in range, which may be around. Uh, Two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars altogether. OK. That's already a hefty sum, okay? Now, depending on the uh, the value of the car itself and how rare it is, okay, the less damage, the less wear and tear, the less it ri it is driven, the more the value is going to increase, okay? And owners of these cars understand that. So they're not gonna drive it every day and decrease that value. Even if it's a rare vehicle that have the potential to grow, they will get a little bit less out of it because of the mileage that they place on the vehicle, especially with these rare automobiles that some of you don't know anything about, like vectors, the list goes on, okay? Now, here's, here's the idea of the measure. 
because it's high performance. Okay, I'm willing to bet as a mechanic myself, it does nothing but wear the parts down a lot faster. And it's a bit more expensive depending on the vehicle because most of them aren't made user friendly because of the fan base and because of the secrecy, which makes a lot of sense. It's a high power performance vehicle. Um, those manufacturers have two things in mind and it only makes sense. It's not the bash them, but I understand. Okay. Keep the fan base going where they end up being the unique mechanic that has these special tools and the technical ability to pull the engine out of the car or to switch the transmission around should they need to do that or even uh, remake or reprogram the special keys that go with these supercars. Okay. So therefore, you as the consumer or the owner of the car can only probably add oil or add antifreeze or add um, washer fluid because those caps are available for you. Other than that, you have to follow the rest of the specifications and uh, it's usually all hands off. Okay, so it will be done for the days of being a home mechanic on your uh, $300,000 automobile. But however, I would say that there are the ones that are more expensive than just $300,000. Okay, they're really going to be hands off. Okay, those are really the cars that are um, that reaches the range of one million and up. Where all you have the ability to do is just look on the, the outside glass. You can view the engine, but that's just that's the most you can do. OK, so forget about trying to change the parts that might be within it. So let me get to the point, OK, because I can babble all day. OK, I told you I've been a car fanatic for a long time. I know a lot about this. I follow them from <laughs> uh, 1920s um, until today. OK, no, I wasn't born in 1920s. Just did my studies, understood it and seen how the car industry have changed dramatically. OK. There is a reason why the manufacturers make and have the ability to make everyday drivers versus uh, the supercars because they have good sense that they know you're not going to drive your um, your Corvette C8. <laughs> OK, uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, 365 days out of the whole year all the time because it can get kind of pricey. OK, depending on the mechanics of it. I'm not sure. I didn't look underneath the hood yet. But I'm pretty sure that um, it would not be healthy for your back pocket. OK, so to answer your question, my email, I'm pretty sure that that that's a misunderstanding. It will be more pricey and it will cost you more um, to feel or to think as if your supercar is going to be an everyday driver. It wouldn't be smart to do that. Those cars are too low to the ground. OK, you can tear up practically everything. And there's too much obstruction on the road. There's too many hazards. There's too many possibilities, too many people with uh, who allow their teenagers to push the grocery cart right next to your car. That's why some people park their uh, their expensive cars at a distance in the parking lot, which makes only sense because those little bitty dings and scratches can cost money. OK, you don't want to <laughs> you don't. You don't want a three million dollar car with scratches on it. It just that just that's a waste of money. That's that's heartbroken, heartbreaking. OK. So the answer is no, absolutely not. It doesn't mean that the car is going to endure or have that ability. It doesn't mean that the, the parts practically ain't playing obsolescence. OK, they just wear out a little bit faster because of high performance. It's so much that that the car has to do to get you from zero to 60 in a flash, okay, that requires high performance of the components that are within the engine compartment and the chassis and the suspension system, the list goes on. I can keep going on and on and on and on in the lightweight body and you don't wanna do that, okay? Now, there's a reason why I chose this email because like I told you, since you're patient and listened this far, it gets better because the title means something. It explains practically a whole lot of everything. It's not limited to the car industry. It's not limited to what lasts long. Okay. 
But I'm going to tell you right now off the gate. The name of the game is called longevity. That's right. It's called longevity. Now, you have several people around your country, around you, who lives a very uh, mindless lifestyle. You know, they they're like that super powered car. OK, uh, the supercar this, this costs like one million dollars and they drive it every day. You know, that's their mentality, it's their energy, it's their their ambition, you know, to do what they're told to do. OK, push button lifestyle. OK, these people run on very high octane. OK, whether they may be a businessman or whether they just can't sit at home all the time. Sometimes, you know, these people, they're on the go. You know, they always post the selfies look like everything is working well for them on Facebook. OK, um, as what some of you may call it, they're stacking papers as it seems that they are. And they are quite functional. These are the type of people, if you're not careful, they will try to motivate you to be the same or to do the same. They'll usually be the ones to try to give you a pep talk, try to push you beyond your limits or try to push you to the limits either way it goes and uh, they will definitely try to raise the bar okay but however I have learned something I'm going to share with you and you probably already know it's no different than that car that's just burrowing down the street okay because everything's about longevity this is a two-sided thing now in this story uh, many years ago, when I was uh, uh, studying, I was working in this warehouse, okay, this warehouse area, for about two years. And while I was there, there was uh, there was a pretty good cultural dynamic, okay, pretty good mix. And in that mix, there were several ladies that were there that liked gossiping and talking about different people and. And amongst them was one of them who was there at least five or six years. So she was the Miss Know-It-All. Okay, she thought she knew everything. She's the one that would uh, be the supervisor's pet. Okay? So she would pretty much run herself ragged. She would just have these high numbers. And, yeah, I can pick these many boxes up faster than you. And I can do this. And I can run circles around you. That sort of girl. Okay? But before I begin, I'm going to tell you something, men, women who you're listening to this is no bash to you. I'm just telling you the truth. You do not compete with women. Do not ever compete with women. Don't do it because you don't have to have anything to prove. OK, that's one of the problems that a lot of people have. They want to prove themselves to someone else. They want to they want to prove how great they are, that they're the better person, that they're stronger, faster, smarter. OK, don't do that with women. Just simply walk away. There are several reasons why. Because of the chemistry, because of the differences that we have. And because if you are confident in yourself and your ability, there's no need to compete. It's laughable. <laughs> just, she just just walk away from it. OK, so there, there's a situation that came. And the reason why I'm telling you this, listen, before you get in your emotions. OK, <laughs> there's a situation that came that where uh, the supervisor wanted more performance. They want more performance. They want more numbers. Do more. Do more. Some of you know about this because some of y'all have been in this situation before. OK, they want to add more labor on you than what they're actually uh, <laughs> they want to add more labor on you but they don't want to add more raises on you okay they want you to perform more okay but they're not going to give you more okay now I've noticed the reason why they were doing this was because of her performance okay you see I'm using that that keyword performance you see and uh they figured, okay, we're going to make this as a standard because she can do it. I feel like you can do it too. And their mentality, she's a woman. So she, you should be able to do better than her because you're supposed to be a man. All those muscles and stuff. You're going to let this little woman beat you. 
So here's the conversation. This is how I ended the conversation. You know me as Morpheus, how I talk to you now. This is who I am. This is who I am every day, all the time. Cool as a cat. Okay. So I was straightforward with him and say, okay, basically, uh, no, I'm, I'm comfortable with my numbers. I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. This is my pace. Okay. This is how I function every day because it's safe for me. It's safe for my longevity. So I can have the energy and the time to go home and do what I need to do and live my life because working here. Okay. Isn't my life. Okay. And then I ended it with, okay, if you want more, okay, then I am going to request for more as well. Okay. Uh, trust me, jobs and corporations don't want to hear you say that. Okay. They don't want to hear you say that because there's someone going to teach you that I'm leading you up to as Morpheus. You're sitting down before me once again, Neo, and I'm actually leading you somewhere. I'm leading you out of the matrix as I always do. When you listen to me, this is your door. Okay. So be patient. You'll get there eventually. So push comes to stuff. And there came the days where she was, <laughs> she was lagging behind. And I noticed that everybody started noticing that. What's going on with you? Uh, she wore herself ragged trying to stay with this performance that was, first of all, unrealistic. Meaning, I'm a. <sighs> I'm trying to hold back because I don't want to go too far ahead of myself. A rule that I'm going to share with you of what she did. OK, uh, she played the puppet and she wanted to be the boss's pet, blah, blah, blah. OK, so basically she didn't give herself enough time to relax and to rest. She didn't mind working overtime. She didn't mind doing 10 hours if they wanted her to stay for 10 hours. OK. And every time I saw her. I don't have any pictures. She looked wore out. You know, her eyes had bags underneath it. Hair was stringy. Um, she forgot things real easy. She was frustrated real fast. And definitely she was a smoker. Her smoking habits was really bad. It seemed like every five, ten minutes she had to go outside and smoke. OK, in psychology and in basic, uh, just basic study, that's a sign of stress. That's a sign of being exhausted and overworked. OK, uh, oftentimes during lunch break, she'd have to sleep. <laughs> she, um, I walk past and, you know, there she go laid out. You know, in strange ways, just laid out, you know, like a cat would do, just stretched out any old type of way because she put too much in. And here I am enduring. Listen, enduring. I'm moving along the story of the rabbit and the hare is real my american family it's real if you want to live longer okay it's all about longevity and endurance it's not about running to the finish line it's not about uh burning up your wheels to get there as fast as possible because you may not make it and because of nature and existence itself you will not make it you can't do it forever that uh, that Ferrari couldn't do it forever. It, it will not do it forever. And if you want it to do it forever, it's going to cost you. OK, it's just plain and simple, especially if you can't get it in the hood. OK, you're going to be spitting out all the money that you should be spending out on your yacht and your boats and your cars. OK, or your children or whatever else you put that money at. It will be taken from there to put into this car that you want to have fun with. 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a week. I mean, a year. Then you find yourself being exhausted of this vehicle. Then you realize it is a severe money pit, but it's not the car's fault. It's not built for that. Okay? Just like yourself or myself, even though you can work 10 hour shift, 9 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, 14 hours, that doesn't mean that you should. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just spill the beans. Or shall I say spill the red peels because I can't hold it back any longer. OK, I have a rule to give you and I'm going to share with you. Oh, then finish the story with that girl uh, before I get onto this. She <laughs> uh, 
she eventually stopped working like that because she realized she was hurting herself. She realized she was running around in circles and she did realize that all she was doing was getting a nice pat on the head from the supervisors. Okay, and she was raising the unrealistic bar. She didn't get anything in return. Some of you know people that are like that around you or you probably even work for them. And they're the reasons why they change the policies and put so much on you that uh, takes away from you and your livelihood. Okay, so and eventually she just, you know, she exhausted herself. Okay, stopped the performance and she wanted to seek for a better job. You'll say, whoa, why Morpheus? All she had to do was slow down. Well, she didn't realize she was the problem. It wasn't the job itself. Is that she put too much in and getting very little out. Because there's something I'm going to share with you. It's called Rule 2080. That's Morpheus's rule. I'm going to share with you. I apply that rule to myself. Okay. Some of you already know about this rule. And some of you probably are the ones who are applying it in your jobs. Okay, whatever you do is your business. But here is the 2080 rule. The 2080 rule is when you exhaust yourself for very little gain. Okay? And the more you do, the more is expected of you. With very little return and profit on a usual basis. All right. Whatever you are chasing, whatever uh, your dreams or desires are, some of you are taught by your parents or grandparents that tell you the only way to get ahead is to work hard. OK. And there are some grandparents who really didn't explain what they meant by that, because there's a difference between working hard and hurting yourself, exhausting yourself to succeed. Because what you must understand with your time and your energy that you have, it's being traded for uh, the money that you are working for. And if you're making all that money and, and you're putting all that time in wherever you are and you can't even go home to enjoy your money, to enjoy your family, to enjoy your new cars, to enjoy your nice uh, bedroom or your dinette set, OK, then it's counterproductive it's counterproductive and you do nothing but hurt yourself whereas you may have something that may um, account for your hard labor and your time but you won't get that time back it's gone it's taken away from you actually you traded it for the money and for the uh, the luxuries that you might have but eventually you're not able to use that you spending uh, years on years, five years, six years working hard and burning your rubbers, but never had the time. I'm talking about rubbers that are on the wheels. OK, mind you, you know, change your mindset. So you <laughs> end up burning that perspectives. OK, and uh, you haven't had time to sit down in your your lounge chair to appreciate your your luxury or your time or just being able to sit down and smell nature for what it is because you're so busy. OK, you're too much doing the the 80, the 2080 rule. The 2080 rule applies for just about everything. And you say, why did I say 2080? Why is it 2080? It represents unbalance. It represents 20 percent for yourself, 80 percent to what you are investing in. So when you continue to invest so much in things that are only giving you very little profit, very little return and is expecting for you to constantly put in such as relationships, such as marriages, such as uh, giving so much of yourself to a person or people, you're giving yourself only 20 percent, sometimes less. OK, sometimes less. And no, you're not sitting there with a calculator trying to figure out what percentage that you're giving or with numbers or digits. OK, no, you're not doing that. It's it's the energy, the positive energy and the time that you invest. Are you getting that in return? Because oftentimes people don't survive the energy and time that they invest 
in whatever the subject might be, whether it might be work, whether it may be even their car, maybe it may it might be their marriage relationships. Sometimes it can even be your children when your children don't want to listen when they are already stuck in their ways because they have been poisoned to a certain age. Talking to them is usually a waste of time. So eventually you end up hurting yourself because you end up needing to take care of their mistakes. You end up needing to babysit their children and practically raise their own children again (laughs) after you raise them. Okay, and you're only investing 80, you're investing 80 percent. You only get 20 percent back from that. And sometimes, yes, that's what it takes to get them to the next stage. But you still end up in most times left to uh, nothing, depending on the situation. So, however, the word endurance and longevity applies all the way across the board. Whereas you have to understand the reason why you get very little sometimes. The reason why, and it applies to girls, women here in America. It applies to them as well. Men, listen. The reason why, on a general basis, in the apparatus of possibilities, why women don't approach you. Why they don't put too much, or you could say the right effort into your relationship. Okay? Why they, you would hear me say on the often in the audio log that it's not good to be in a long term relationship with them. It's not good to marry them. Okay, spend time bettering yourself. Spend time taking care of your own, uh, your own grass field. You say, why do you say this, Morpheus? Because when you calculate the whole, when you do your research and you listen, you learn. You travel the world. You go from country to country. Okay, you go to town to town, city to city here in the U.S. Okay, okay, and you notice that um, the girls who are sprung for the wrong reasons because they're just using illogical uh, emotions. Okay, chase men who are no good for them. Okay, you can say the bad boys, the guys who just are aggressive and don't really care about them. Women love that type of stuff. But if you are the opposite, you're the gentleman, okay, you are the one to take care of her. Um, she may not be that interested in you. I know somebody, like, oh my God, you're lying, Morpheus. What? No, no, she, no, absolutely not. Okay, because on a general basis, okay, if she is interested in you, she expects for you to approach. She expects for you to make it known and clear. She expects for you in her mind because of grandma, grandpa, and all the false traditions that are really silly. She expects for you to be the one to come up with some type of come online to say, hey, I'm interested in you, which is so simple. Okay? Because even if you, now, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Even if you do, gentlemen, and you decide to put your, uh, your man card down, okay, and, uh, uh, you decide to build up some type of confidence in yourself and you approach her anyway. Okay. What will happen is she'll use that opportunity to say no, or I'm talking to someone or I'm busy or I'm going to school and work and no at the same time. Excuse, 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 excuse. I'm too busy for that. Blah, 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 blah. There are two things that are going on right now that you got to understand men. Okay. One is she loves for you to approach her anyway because you give her nothing but complete fodder and strength. The, listen, the 2080 rule, you're giving too much to her. You're giving her the opportunity to say yes or no. Okay, that's why you get dumped. That's why you get your heart broke. Uh, that's why she don't respect you. Okay, because you're giving her the choice and the option. Okay, and you're giving yourself the disadvantages on so many levels, okay? When you need to understand you are the prize, you understand? And the other part of it is simple. There are too many blue pill beta guys already pumping her head up online, okay? The computer, her Instagram, her Facebook, her Snapchat, the list goes on, blah, 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 blah. Five times, 12 times before you even approach her, 
Okay, there's been other men there already saying the same thing. Okay, so usually, like I told you before, if she's saying no, it's not really no. It's no right now, because right now she's dealing with all sorts of other donuts. <laughs> okay, she's, de- she's dealing with all sorts of other um, <laughs> uh, uh, blue pill hedgehogs. Okay, so she's not, it's too much for her. Okay, sometimes it can be overwhelming to the point where uh, even these girls are irritated with you. You understand? They're irritated. They get irritated sometimes. You say, dang, I can't get, why did this guy approach me? Now, you would think, man, I was trying, listen, listen, man, you'd be like, I thought I was being nice to her. Man, I approached this girl and I was just a gentleman. I was just like, you know, can I take you out to eat? I'm going to spend some time with you. know, who are you? You know, my name is, you know, Drake. You know, I just want to just, and she just, Man, she turned me down hard like I did something wrong. She turned her nose up, started looking at me all crazy. She gave me an attitude. And then you'd be like, dang, you stuck up, blue, 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 blue. You're like, <laughs> she was a stuck up, blue, 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 blue. Because you ain't understanding. You're not understanding that she has options, gentlemen. She has choices and options. You don't. Even though there's, yeah, I, want, I hear your argument. You know, yeah, man, I got all kind of women, man. All, they don't want to leave me alone. I ain't talking about you. Morpheus never talks about the minimum. I talk about the maximum. There's another channel for that type of argument and debate. I'm talking the root of the problem is more than the, the ones that are solved. Maybe your problems are solved. I'm talking about the 80% that isn't solved. That's the point that we need to be talking about right now. Okay, save your stuff for somebody else. Now, listen, on a general basis, you are already on the losing team. Women are on the winning team. You know how I know this? It's very simple. Psychologists can tell you this. I mean, once you put the video down, this audio down, go talk to a doctor somewhere. Go talk to a psychologist somewhere. Go talk to somebody who's really counsel people. Go talk to them for a second. Bill, why? Why is this? It's very, very, very simple. Because they have options. Because blue pill beta <laughs> astronaut guys, okay, who are on Jupiter somewhere, who have no good sense about the difference between these American women today versus the ones that was in 1920, okay, they're still putting out the red carpet. They're still saying, oh, I'll marry you. I'll do it, George. Okay. I'll open up the door for you, sweetie pie. <laughs> I'll go ahead and pay for your college tuition because, you know, you're so cute. I'll do it for you. So <laughs> he don't mind being part of the 20% disadvantage because he'll wait, you know, forever, you know, till about 65 to give him the opportunity to get him some type of donkey donkey. Okay? Because he don't mind listening to other, uh, what do you call that? There's people on the internet, they call coaches. The coaches will say, man, you got to keep trying, man. Even if you denied, man, you just got to. That's just part of it. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be rejected. So keep going. Be rejected 25 times. There's going to be one woman, at least one, that's going to say something. (laughs) Silly. Really, really silly. That's giving the other team power to decide to choose you when you should be like, wait a minute. No, uh -uh. I ain't. No, I'm not about to play that game. I am not about to play that game. Okay? When it should be the other way around. Okay, you say, well, how come she ain't glad some dude's walking up to her and trying to get her numbers? No, because that's her fodder. Women love that attention. So it should be the other way around where they should be willing to be rejected if they approach you, men. Then we have a discussion. Now we have something to talk about. If you got girls who say, you know what? I think you're cute. You know, can I talk to you? Let's talk for a few minutes. And I'm interested in you. You know, blah, 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 blah. Let's go out with it. You single, same things you say. They can say the same thing. But you know what? Grandma of the days of old and some of these people are still holding on to the ignorant, outdated, relegated, (laughs) senseless. Okay. Maybe I used the wrong word when I said relegated. I meant relic of (laughs) ideas of how you're supposed to approach so they're still saying no honey you should never approach the man because that's not ladylike really 
<laughs> like, you know, what lady like is. So they're supposed to just sit there and men do everything. Again, here's the rule. 2080. 2080. So what ends up happening, men, is that you put more in, you get nothing out. You get very little out. So in that condition, it's the same. And eventually, check this out. You're going to burn out over time by keep approaching these girls. You keep chasing them. You keep they keep saying, OK, in a minute, in a minute. You know, that minute is like two months to a year. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're going to hang out. Yeah, we're going to do this. You know, you keep waiting hand and foot on something that's been used. <laughs> OK, you're still waiting, putting down your, your best game. Doing what the coaches say, you know, well, this marriage failed, so I'm going to try another marriage and do it all over again to a girl who was married once, which is not a wise thing at all. OK, not a wise thing at all, because now you're sharing energies and you're with somebody who probably don't have the potential to peer bond with you because she's been with somebody who shared enough of her energy and she has nothing left for you. Very little, but hopes and dreams for the first two years and eventually she'll just fall off the cliff. OK. All cars with near three, I didn't say exactly, I said near 300,000 miles will eventually start showing problems and leaks, okay, and issues, okay? Same as if you tried to burn your rub with a Ferrari, you know, give it that many mileage and you, <laughs> every day driving it, okay, that price will be expensive. That's the same as these girls that you're putting in, what, 2080 rule, 80% and you're getting nothing in return, Nothing. I say 20 is nothing because it's unbalanced. Anything that's unbalanced is going to cause a catastrophe eventually. OK, so I had to use it as an example. That's just part of the subject. OK, so with these various lessons underneath endurance. OK, it applies to all kind of things, even your job. It still applies there where you want to be there till you retire. OK, but if you're happy to work 11, 10 hours every day, um, you're going to burn yourself out. Eventually, you're just going to burn yourself out because you got an inner man that needs to be taken care of. You need to you need to smell the flowers for once and relax a little bit. You know, longevity is not based on racing and running and getting to several places and uh, pushing yourself to your maximum all the time. You're going to burn up immediately. And then you end up in the hospital. You end up breaking your legs. Um, I did a... Uh, let me give you this example. And I'm going to give you another audio log. I need to give you an example of something. I was in a uh, bodybuilding competition. Okay. But it was a very unique one. Okay. And this bodybuilding competition... It was based on uh, stamina. Okay. And so what we did was a travel. We did a travel to, uh, what was that place? Uh, Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, in a truck. And the plan was to uh, take all these heavy groceries off the truck. It was legitimate. It was really legitimate, but we were there also, and it made it easy. It was a very good price cut because. We helped the guys who were actually delivering uh, the heavy loads to one of the uh, shops that were there. But at the same time, okay, we were using that excuse to lift the heavy load as well. So that all the guy had to do was drive. Okay. One of the guys that I was with, okay, he was he was one of the fast movers. He thought he was just tough, right? He was, you know, he was this, uh, um, <laughs> he was this. He's just Camaro, right? I'm always teasing Camaros, if you know that. I, I talk about them a lot because <laughs> some of you guys really think it's a <laughs> it's a Knight Rider 2000, you know, <laughs> 2020. It's just funny. Anyway, so he's he's really think that he's he got something going on, right? Yeah, man, I'm the toughest here, man. I'm just and I, I watched the competition. The competition was a continual thing. It wasn't like he, we were taking turns. You know, we were trying to do the most. You know, who can lift this up and keep going and lift all this weight down the ramp, up the ramp, down the ramp, up the ramp, and so who stops and get tired, okay? So I did something that, uh, let's see, what did, okay, I'll tell you what I did. There was, uh, let's see, 
there was a, a bag of onions and potatoes. The bag of onions were like 50 some pounds each. Onions was like, uh, like 60 some pounds. They were big, huge onions. He would stack his up all the way to the top. It was a dolly all the way up. And I'm like, okay, I'm like you, you can do that, man. You better calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself. Like you know, just you know, you're trying to pump iron and get your legs and your back straight and you know your muscles. I know you're trying to pump up, man. That's a little bit too much. He's like, no, nah, man, I can do it. No, you're just trying to beat me. I'm like, okay, all right, you know, don't listen to me. So what did I do, uh, men and maybe you women who are listening or my American people family? I did what I preach i practice what i preach i didn't put that much on it i put half on it okay i didn't care what people were thinking i didn't care <laughs> oh this is competition man what you no 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 let him no go ahead and let him shine let him shine i'm good right i'm not caring i'm just cool told you i'm a cool cat so i put it like halfway through i don't care what's with it oh man you you cheating man you you why don't you just go ahead and stack it up like him man you stronger than him look man you go ahead and show him what you can do go ahead and show him what you can do i'm like no okay okay i'm like okay that's what you want me to do that's not what i want to do okay so okay i'm, I'm going down the ramp i'm doing 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 i'm just going psh, moving back and forth right he does at least uh, five trips all this way because you got to take it from one landing <laughs> almost uh, not even a, it's not a quarter of a mile that we had to go with that stuff. But we had an up ramp. We had to take it into the uh, the awning. I think it was an awning area. I can't think of what it is. Then there was a service room in the back because, of course, it was legitimate. So they actually wanted the product. You know, So if we dropped it, you know, they'd go, oh, you know, just pay for it, whatever fun times I had to draw myself but so he did it like five times after the fifth okay I know he's like sweating to death I'm like shaking a little bit I mean you okay you think you're gonna pass out like, oh man I'm, I'm I'm okay man I, I can do it you know that that same old male pride I can do it man no no I'm losing my arms and legs but I can do it that's what men do you know, just stop that stuff you know just be honest just be cool with it man right but some men, they can't get that. They don't get it. No, I'm a Camaro. I can beat you. Oh, you're in the Pagani Zonda. I can beat you. Okay. Now, I got a V12. <laughs> 720 some horses. And <laughs> okay. All right. You can beat me. All right. I'll let you think that. I ain't even going to rev my engine. I'm just going to sit here at the starting line and I'm going to let you go. <laughs> go. Go a quarter mile ahead of me and watch me. <laughs> like Violet said, that movie. Uh, what was that movie with Ultraviolet when she was the vampire woman? She was standing in the middle and there was five guys being a fighter. It was a movie. If y'all don't know what it is, you know, you look it up. And um, one of the guys was like, you know, we're going to get you. We don't kill you, Violet. And she stood still and she moved her hair aside to show her ears so she can listen to all. She said, watch me. <laughs> it's like, watch me. But anyway, so he's getting exhausted and tired now. OK, I did at least seven or eight trips already and I'm still going. I'm still doo, 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 back and forth I'm like, man, you just how are you able to do this? And of course, the wise ones was like, well, he's not stacking that much. So, of course, he's going to be able to do more. Duh. So I'm enduring. I'm moving up the ramp, down the ramp, up the down, down the ramp. I've yet to meet my max yet, yet to get exhausted, yet to uh really even feel tired i could have kept going you know actually everything was out of the truck i couldn't even lift anything else because it, <laughs> there was nothing else to lift but i could keep going so i ended up winning the competition okay they uh they didn't count me doing less as cheating it was actually doing more because i did most of the weight that was there and he was only able to do five or six so he was you know kind of messed up so here's the lesson of this story. Again, you see the title called Endurance. It's all about longevity. It's not about how tough you are. It's not about how smart you think you are because you got so many degrees and I've graduated from the Wesleyan University. I am the best of Harvard can give. So I blessed it Harvard with my intelligence. 
So you need be you, you are honored to go against me because I am smarter. I'm smarter than anything that you think is smart. Okay, okay. It's not even about that either, uh, Duke. <laughs> you know, Point Dexter. It's not about that. Okay, it's not about where you was raised at or what side of town either. You know, some people be like, "Man, I'm from the Bronx, man. Man, I'm from I'm from I'm from the." The east side. I mean, I'm, I'm from the rough side, man. I come from the ghetto, man. You can't, I'm coming. You know, it's not even about that either. It's not about that, my friend. It's about endurance and longevity. Soldiers can tell you that. It's not about how many people you, you have to put down. It's when you go out there to the, you get out there in the field, you take out enemies, you come back with the mission complete. It's about you coming back. Not going in there headlong. I'm gonna take out every man. I'm gonna, ooh, I want all the stripes. That's you know that's that's pinky in the brain. Okay, yeah, that's that's pinky in the brain. Okay, you want to be the brains of it. Sit back and be cool. Okay, not the one who's gonna be in a wheelchair. And that's gonna lead me to the end of this audio because thereafter, okay, I went on to other competitions, doing my thing. All right. When I came back to collect my winnings from that particular area, though I'm not going to tell you, none of your business. <laughs> anyway, I'm having fun with this. Toes is my favorite audio. Um, I saw the guy. He showed up, um, got out of this nice truck, you know, nice uh, Ram truck. You know, I was kind of impressed. It all lifted up and everything, shiny. I'm like, okay. Uh, and uh, his leg was in a cast and he was moving real slow. I said, uh, are you okay? What happened to you? Because he looked okay in the competition. You know? But I knew he probably did something. He said, man, I man, I fell down one of the landings, broke my leg. Uh, they had to, <laughs> I'm in a cast now and uh, I sprained my, uh, sprained my ankle. You know, my back hurt. And I just about got myself a hernia. And I'm thinking like, uh, no wonder. <laughs> of course. What you I told you to slow down. And you didn't want to listen to me. Just oh I'm tough. Oh, I can do it all, oh, man. I can do it. And br- that's the same as no different than when you are in the super powered automobile and you think, oh, I'm just gonna drive like this every day, all the time, and I'm good. And I'm gonna tell you the Corolla, I'm just cruising, you know, 60, 70, sometimes 55 miles per hour, and you just boom. One location to the next. Okay, you'll get there earlier than me. Okay, I give you those cookies. That's fine. All right. You got a flashy car. All the uh, flies and roaches will be flying around. I mean, women will be flying around you <laughs> because you know because you you know you drive something that smell good. Okay, smell like roses, so they like that stuff. You know, and mine is just you know it's just a regular car. But I tell you what, at the end of the year. <laughs> I'm still the winner. You know, at the end of the at the end of the year, I got the proceeds. You have nothing, okay? Just like that lady who tried to challenge me. Oh, I'm better than you. I'm lifting more boxes than you. Look at this. I got more numbers than you. You should do what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. The supervisor's like, sure, go ahead, because they want you to do that anyway. Because no matter how much you do, okay, it's not like you're going to get. You know, they're not going to give you that many. Uh, raises at the same time okay oh i'm working again. i'm gonna work to get a raise and i'm da, 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 da. no the more you put in the more they're gonna expect simple as that and then when you slack off they're gonna say wait a minute you are supposed to do this number <laughs> you can't slack off now we expect for you to do this now we know you just flunking your your uh, your work now we know you're just playing around you know if you can lean you can clean <laughs> okay so you don't cut yourself a break just like that Okay, apply that to every other type of thing. It's rule 2080. When you deal with people on an everyday basis, and I did bring in relationships with it because it's just the same. When you, and that doesn't have to do with endurance, but it can if you apply it a different way. But that has to do with what you are investing in. Is it investing in you? You put in what you're getting out. What that means is if you're putting in and that item or person, job, place, energy is putting in as well, then it may be worthwhile. It may be the thing to do. 
But if you're putting in and you're not getting what you want or you need out of it, walk away. Walk away. Just don't even waste your time. Don't waste your time. There was a time where, and it's, it's still like that now, okay? When it comes to trying to be a white knight for a woman, okay? My response and request would always be, oh, uh, you're going to be a white knight for me? <laughs> you know what they'll say? Go ahead. Some of y'all know it. Come on. It's already at the tip of your tongue. Some You men know. I already know. I can hear you right now with audio. She will say, why? You are a man. <laughs> As if that's the ultimate excuse not to be accountable to give you what you're giving. <laughs> okay. So you end up putting all that in. Oh, I'm a man. So she expects for me to do all this. She expects for me to do it because I'm a man. But what are you expecting her to do as a woman? <laughs> you see that? You probably expect her to do nothing because you're comfortable, okay, with rule 2080. You don't mind being the one who's out of pocket 80% of the time, okay? Getting cheated on 80% of the time while she's talking to somebody on her uh, her smartphone while you at work. I know y'all don't care about it, but I'm just saying, just for those who do care, Okay. <laughs> No, you don't mind giving in to the uh, the new American dream, which is the woman with the arm and hammer uh, being your head leader, your anchor, your reason and uh, your force of power. Why you take the passenger seat of your own life. I know you don't mind doing that. You don't mind the, the you don't mind that 2080 balance that we have now. OK. And you wonder why there's nothing but distortion. So when you comprehend this, okay, you comprehend this lesson, the power that will be given to you, okay, is understanding how to draw the line and have balance with yourself and save yourself at the same time. My idea is to save you and to make you understand that a lot of the constructs that we are dealing with the inflated items, things costing more than what they're worth, buying plain obsolescent garbage, <laughs> it's, be it's because there are people who don't mind giving 80, 20. They don't mind that. They don't mind that rule <laughs> because they don't love themselves enough. Once you start loving yourself and you understand that you are the prize, that you are priority, no matter what the opinion is, OK, or what everybody else is doing, you're going to be all right. You know how many people that were standing around me when I had that uh, that stamina competition? There's a lot of people sitting there just smiling and some had a straight face. And I can imagine some of them like, oh, look at you. You'll win. I didn't care about what they thought. You know what I cared about? I cared about my safety and my health. I cared about going for the long run. That's what I cared about. And it worked out just fine. It worked out just fine. When you are in a relationship and you do the and you are concerned with the 2080 rule, if you are aware of it, OK, then you will be aware that it's not going to endure when you're the one putting 80 percent into this relationship, trying to make this car work. Even a smart uh, a smart car buyer, okay, isn't going to apply. Well, they're not going to violate the the 2080 rule because you're buying a car, you put money in, you put money in, you're investing in, you've got to fix it up and you're not getting anything out of it. You're like, dang, this is a waste of time. This is a lemon. This is a junk bucket. Then why don't you, my brothers and sisters, apply that to your whole life? Apply it to everything. Uh, everything. I stunned a woman once upon a time who, uh, <laughs> I say once upon a time because I, well, I don't play around no more. Just say it, it either is or isn't. I don't do the beating around the bush and oh, uh, uh, can I can I take you out? No, I'm gonna. It, it, you know, you know what's up. Don't play with me. You know why I'm here. You know, let's let's do it. Don't waste my time. <laughs> it's just, you know, I don't, I don't do that stuff anymore. Okay. So, uh, 
So what I mean by once upon a time is there was a time 